It was a different time. Ronald Reagan was in the White House. The A-Team was on television, and a tiny company in Kenosha, Wisconsin, was building one of the most American cars ever made. Buckle your seatbelts, because we are going back in time. I apologize in advance to muscle car owners, but this is the most American car. After all, you can't compete with a name like the American Motors Eagle. It's patriotic, it's tough, and it has four-wheel drive. Just like G.I. Joe, it's a real American hero. Back in the late 70s, AMC hit a financial rough patch and lacked the money to design some badly needed new cars. Roy Lunn, a clever engineer from the company's Jeep division, had tested the possibility of adding four-wheel drive to their existing cars. This inexpensive proposal would give AMC a new product that GM, Ford, and Chrysler didn't offer. Management approved his proposal, and Eagles began flying out of American Motors' Wisconsin factory for the 1980 model year. The wagon was the most popular body style, and this 1986 model matches the rest of its family with quad headlamps, an egg crate grille, and AMC's signature chrome paddle door handles. With several inches of lift over the AMC Concorde from which it's based, the Eagle has a strong, aggressive stance, exaggerating its size. Rather than spend precious funds redesigning the body, American Motors used plastic fender flares to fill the gaps caused by the increase in ride height. Unlike the outside, the interior clearly shows its compact car roots. Adults will find rear seat room adequate, but not generous. Space in the front is satisfactory, although the windshield seems strangely close compared to modern cab forward designs. There's something comforting about old cars with plush, intensely colored carpet, although the red seems to clash with the wood grain trim. To prove its off-road credibility, we took this wagon up the side of a small mountain. The AMC Eagle is not a Jeep. It doesn't have a low speed transfer case and it doesn't have the kind of ground clearance you'd get with a Wrangler or a Cherokee. But there has not been a single obstacle today that it has not been able to tackle. Every puddle, every rock, every slushy, muddy, sloppy area we've been through, this brave little car has conquered it. Although this was far from the Baja 1000, I was thoroughly impressed. Bigger bumps did cause the vehicle to shake like a bowl of jelly, but never once did it get stuck. The Eagle's ability comes from the car's select drive system. Power transfers through a viscous coupling consisting of a set of plates surrounded by silicone fluid. When a wheel loses traction and starts to spin, the speed difference causes the silicone to resist, forcing all the plates to turn together. Thus, instead of sending power down the path of least resistance, the viscous coupling forces the front and rear to cooperate. With the capabilities of an SUV, but the drivability of a car, Eagles gave owners the best of both worlds. We climbed back down the mountain and hosed off the Eagle before hitting the streets. Here, Select Drive continued to impress. We've been driving around all day with the four-wheel drive engaged and there hasn't been hammering and knocking and squeaking and squawking and all that. And look, here's how easy it is. I just took us out of four-wheel drive right there. No locking hubs, no <coughs> gear shifts, any of that kind of nonsense. Really, the Eagle is a fantastic vehicle just for that reason alone. The viscous coupling allows you to use the system on dry pavement without damaging the car, which, honestly, is where most people drove these. Powering all of this is AMC's seven main bearing inline six. From its carbureted 4.2 liters, it produces a meager 112 horsepower. This engine came standard by 1986, although several previous years offered a four-cylinder for those who wanted even less power. Coupled to a Chrysler Source three-speed automatic, the Eagle will get you almost anywhere, just not in a hurry. Every hero has his Achilles heel, and the Eagle's was its age. 
Its performance was sufficient when the car debuted in 1980, but as the horsepower and fuel economy of other cars began to climb, the Eagle looked decidedly old-fashioned next to the four-speed automatics and fuel-injected V6s of Detroit and Japan. Plus, its basic styling came from the 1978 Concorde, which came from the 1970 Hornet, which even AMC's talented design staff couldn't hide as everyone and their mother flocked to buy a Ford Taurus. It seems ironic that a car with the world's most advanced four-wheel drive system would have such an outdated body and powertrain. But then, as Ken Burns likes to remind us, heroes are always full of contradictions. But the AMC Eagle isn't a person, it's a car, and the buying public is unforgiving. Adding to the Eagle's growing list of contradictions, its transfer case comes from England, and this car was actually built in Canada. Significant updates could have saved the Eagle, but finances were tight at American Motors and resources went toward other products. Finally, in 1987, Chrysler purchased American Motors Corporation, and Eagle production continued only long enough to use up the remaining parts inventory. Hardly a heroic ending. In 1980, Roy Lund submitted a technical paper to the Society of Automotive Engineers, where he said, It was evident that many consumers coming from the two-wheel drive segments were buying four-wheel drive vehicles for the security they offered for on-highway driving, although the only vehicles available were accented to off-road usage. This out-of-context purchase, particularly in high volumes, raised the question of whether there was a need for a new type of vehicle. This line of reasoning, coupled with the need for more fuel-efficient vehicles, led to the Eagle. Replace Eagle with Escape, CRV, or Crosstrek and you realize he predicted the future 35 years ago. For two decades, Americans gobbled up Explorers, Tahoes, and Grand Cherokees, only to find that most of us don't need a hardcore off-roader. All we want is a car with a little extra ground clearance and all-wheel drive. As the craze for crossover utilities grows, we've seen a resurgence of familiar ideas, right down to the plastic fender flares. Perhaps AMC really was onto something. In the end, the Society of Automotive Engineers gave Roy Lunn an award for his work. All heroes leave a legacy behind. Plenty of cars outsold the Eagle, yet few have outlasted it. I am impressed with how it blazed a trail both figuratively and literally. Indeed, it is a real American hero. We'd like to thank Ronnie Schreiber of CarsInDepth.com for providing some of the images and information used in this video. If you have a cool car you'd like to see in a video, shoot us an email. And don't forget to check out our blog and follow us on Facebook. Feel like